with us now is Evan Hirsch, and he has been doing a lot of things in New York City, including his own show, his own bridal fashion show. Welcome. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be on your new set, and thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Very exciting things have been happening. You were in our new immersive studio filming your own lookbook. So tell us about that day for you, Evan. So, well, that was amazing. I participated in my first bridal fashion week, which I've attended on our, on your show a couple of times, but this is my first time showing at Melange de Blanc Bridal Market and I needed a lookbook. So I thought, where's an amazing studio where I could film some of my looks and Drake Media Studios kind of came in perfectly for that. And I'm happy home. about it. Oh home my gosh, home. this was like family, you know? So let's take a look at that. I see some familiar faces that you were, had as models, right? My good friends, uh, yes, as, models, good friends yes. as models. It's nice when you have that community of support. No, definitely. It was not even a question when I needed to film these looks. I thought about what, what should I do? I didn't want to burden you, but you said, please come, like let the girls be your models and let's just film this together. And all of the buyers and everybody was so impressed when they saw the lookbook that we put together. Transformational. Your gowns are transformational. Your life has been transformational. Life has been good for you. You also got invited, um, our show got invited to the Image Awards. Yes, the American Image Awards, which is put together by the American Apparel and Footwear Association in combination with the CFDA, the Council of Fashion Designers of America, who any designer would be lucky to be with them. So to be in that room with them at the iconic Plaza Hotel, it was amazing, just with some amazing fashion honorees. I was just enthralled to be there. I loved it. Well, I'm sure they were glad that you were there as well. So you did the interviews on the red carpet, and then you also got to, they invited you to stay, you know, for the actual awards. Yes, yeah. I got to see everyone who I interviewed receive their honoree in the middle of the award ceremony. It was it was just like a night that I'll never forget. And to be among, you know, all these fashion people, it, it just makes me feel great. Now that organization you were talking about, what is that? What, what do those acronyms stand for? The CFDA? The CFDA, it's the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Any designer that you love and respect, you know, the Calvin Kleins of the world, the Michael Kors of the world, they all are in the CFDA. So it's kind of a program that nurtures both young designers and established designers. And they kind of have all the resources to participate in the industry at their fingertips. So you'll see some new members, some young designers who just got accepted and some, you know, veterans and Stephen Kolb, who's the uh, president and, you know, um, Cassandra Diggs, who's a good friend of mine, who's also, you know, high up in the CFDA. So they're all amazing. That's wonderful. Evan, thank you so much. And you know what? Let's take a look at your coverage for the Image Awards. This is Evan Hirsch, fashion correspondent for The Donna Drake Show. We're live here at the iconic Plaza Hotel for the American Image Awards, where we will undoubtedly see some forces of fashion tonight. Come on with us. I love the whole, the glitz, the glam, the lights. I've always been like that since I was a little girl. So I'm either in like sweatpants chilling or I'm in a ball gown. Like there's kind of no in between. No in between. As someone who dreamt of designing as a child and who's now a full-fledged fashion designer, 
um, who just released a couture collection. Um, it's, it's an honor to be here. We both work at an organization called Souls for Souls, and we work with lots of footwear and apparel brands. And so we have lots of friends here at the Image Awards tonight. We are here with Joe Preston from New Balance. I am so excited to be from here with you. You're the most amazing CEO and you've been with the company longer than I've been alive, not to date you, but I just wanted to ask you, what is it like to keep a brand so relevant and just keep it in the now? Well, New Balance is a great brand. It's been around since 1906 and we've got such a talented team of people from around the globe that come together and work in a spirit of teamwork and a culture that they build and have been building for many years. And what advice do you have for someone who's an entrepreneur or is running their company but they want to be in touch with the next generation which New Balance has done so amazingly? Well staying as close as you can to the consumer because they're constantly shifting you know and we have an entrepreneurial spirit within our company and it comes from never giving up. And what does it mean to be honored here today because it's well deserved but I want to know your thoughts on it. Well, it's a real nice for our company to be acknowledged like this. It's such a great industry, and uh, we're just thankful to be here. We're here with Nicholas Ryevsky. I just wanted to say, I mean, I've seen your work in person, so it's not a surprise to me that you're having the most amazing moment, like, ever. But correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you had a major announcement that you're now a... Yes, I'm now a CFDA inter member. So happy and honored to be here. Everyone at the CFDA has been fantastic, and I feel like it's like joining a new family. I'm just so lucky. Honestly, and I found that everybody who works with you, they come out like a changed person. <laughs> like, I have friends who've worked on projects with you, and they... The, like they have just learned so much and gained so much industry knowledge and that's the true spirit of being a CFDA you know participant yeah I mean it's insane to me because I don't really know what I'm doing all the time Neither do I. I always said a ship can go a lot further with a lot of people in it right and you can row across the ocean in a rowboat but it's a lot faster and more fun in a cruise ship so that's kind of my mentality as I built the branding so you are clearly an amazing, fabulous actor with a flair and style that is unmatched. So what is it like to be at an event like this tonight? Thank you. Well, I'm very excited, especially to be representing Tom Brown, uh, because I grew up very Catholic, very um, traditional. This is sort of like how I would do my uniform back in the day. Uh, so it's just good to embrace who I really am and, um, you know, benefiting the CFDA is a wonderful opportunity to see so many lovely people. No, I love how you, you know, represent Tom Brown in just such a way that is so instantly recognizable. I mean, I feel like you're like amused tonight. I went right to you and I was like, see, I can recognize the brand and I recognize the person in it. So what advice do you have to aspiring actors out there? I think to stay in the course and don't give up because when you're about to give up, just know that like maybe around the corner the opportunity is waiting for you and also to not take no for an answer. I am living proof, I am queer openly, I am Latino, I'm an immigrant, I have an accent, but I fought until we're here, you know? And you work with obviously some really amazing, iconic people, if you could tell us a little bit about that and what you've learned from them. Well, for me, the most exciting part was working with Steven Spielberg on West Side Story. Uh, as a Latino, you know, having that opportunity and also be surrounded by amazing Latino storytellers was very meaningful. And also the upcoming movie with Jennifer Lopez, Atlas. Um, very excited about it, can't share too much yet, but it's coming out and we're very excited to represent for Colombia and all the Latinos. Well, I just want to ask you about how it feels to be the MC tonight. I mean, being the MC is great. It is fun when you are able to hand out awards to tremendous people, right? People that you have either worn or you look up to, right? You've got Willie Chavarria, you have, you know, Joe Preston from New Balance, Harlem Fashion Row, uh, you know, Will McDonough, the father of circularity. There are so many incredible people here. People see fashion and they see this, right? They see beautiful people wearing beautiful outfits, but the apparel industry like those are our socks those are the shoes those are the basics you know that kind of stuff we need right we, and the AAFA makes sure that those things are on the shelves we are here with William and I just wanted to say I have been researching your cradle to cradle concept and it's so good for our you know ecosystem and our world so can you tell our audience a little bit about that well the idea is that the world is made up of a regenerative biosphere and a circular technosphere so we can design things to go back to nature elegantly, or we can design them to be reused 
the technology without creating waste. And how do you apply all of these amazing concepts to the fashion industry? Because as you know, we're one of the most wasteful industries. So what are, can we do to combat that? Well, one example here is the Ralph Lauren uh, cashmere sweater, which is made from a natural material where everybody is treated well, the, the chemicals are all good, the energy is from renewables, the water is clean, things like that. So in the natural world, we can do that. And then the sweater is so nice that you'd pass it on to generations. So it's got a built-in regeneration to it. And then on the technical side, we can imagine uh, materials like the polyesters and others that become coherent over time. So we can recycle them quickly, easily, and coherently. So it's either nature or industry. But the one thing we shouldn't be doing is mixing it all up or ignoring the fact that we're going to want to use it again. We are here with Brandon Blackwood. I just wanted to say I am a super fan. I am so amazed by the accessories that you make. And I have to tell you an embarrassing story. I was actually watching a morning show with my parents and my dad was so inspired by your story. He was like, I'm going to contact him because I'm a fellow designer and I want to, you know, get you guys connected. I was like, little did we know that I'd be interviewing you to this day. Right? What I wanted to ask you about is you had like a non-traditional start in this industry. Can you tell us about that? So I think with me, social media really took a big part of it. I made a very, like, I guess, kind of wild bag at the time during 2020, the ESR tote. From there, I think we got a lot of traction from that and just a lot of eyes on us, and we just grew the brand organically from there. But I would say, you know, I didn't really do a lot of, like, CFDA programs or, like, you know, apprenticeships, things like that. I didn't even go to design school. It was really just social media and people loving what we were doing. I think like my customer and I grew together to today. Most definitely. And you've had a lot of celebrities who've fallen in love with your bags. So can you tell me like what was that one moment where you said, wow, this is just unreal? I mean, there's so many like pinch me moments, but yesterday Kate Beckinsale had a, a photo just full out in like this like ballet pose in my shoes and I didn't even know she had them and that's major. So I think every day there's like another little thing, but you know, I think dressing Serena Williams. Because you know, I'm not really known for gowns, but being able to do that, and she loved it, was really great. Cheryl's Emmy win with that gown as well. Kim Kardashian wearing my bags, like, I don't know, it's just, it's all great. I, it just doesn't feel real. The work speaks for itself, and speaking of the work speaking for itself, you, I've never seen this before, but you actually bring about change with your accessories. You bring change, messages of change, through your art. Can you tell us about that? So I think, like, yeah, we got really popular with the ESR tote. Um, it was a very bold design at the time, and I think because I didn't have the traditional fashion upbringing and I wasn't really, I didn't know better, and I wasn't kind of scared to do it. I was very like mouthy online, I talked about what I felt should be going on, whether it be like politics, fashion, whatever, and I think our customer grew from there. You did a collection where you had two different models walking down simultaneously, both in the same garment, but in different size inclusive pieces. Can you tell us about that? Um, that's actually been a staple of my the way I present since the beginning of the brand. So whether it's digital, social media, or runway, I really want to show the proof of concept, which is that it's it's a size inclusive line. And um, so I show side by side one smaller size, one larger size, and I think the effects are really wonderful. As always, uh, you represented um, our show very, very well. It's a pleasure to always have you be part of our family and Evan continued success. And I, I just keep thinking of, you know, I always say Evan Hirsch, you know, and you actually have bridal gowns now that are available because of that show. Yes, you it's know? been crazy. You have orders. Some, yeah, orders from different stores and it's gotten the attention of some amazing people like Harper's Bazaar Spain just did a piece on me. Up Next Designer by Albert. He's this amazing Instagram curator. He's the fairy godfather of emerging designers. He's found outfits for Kylie Jenner and Beyonce's album cover and he posted my work. So I, I'm just like, I'm an amazing company and I owe a lot to you also because oh. of all the amazing things that you do for me. All I do is shine a light on the talent that you have. You are extraordinary. We all love you. It's so exciting. And I guess next month when I'm taping, you know, maybe I'll wear like a little Evan Hirsch piece. You I'll know? have to start making it right I, now. You know, I, I can't wait. Thank you so much, Evan. Thank you, Donna. Bless you. Happy journeys to you. You're just, I don't know, you're like one of my favorite people in the you're whole world. You're my TV fairy godmother. There you go. <laughs> Ding! And you get a show. And you get a show. Okay. Stay tuned for more. We hope you enjoyed all of the looks that we just showed you. Be well.